All right, welcome to this segment of Bayou Time. I'm Martin Falls, along with Trooper Ross Brennan, the public information officer for Troop C. Trooper Brennan, good to see you again. Same to you. Y'all continue to be busy. Let's maybe start off with the uh, the notable arrest on the 7th. Uh, a lot of drugs were confiscated. Yeah, so our guys, they've been busy. Um, we kind of have a recent uptick of... Uh, you know, people fleeing from stops. And we actually had a, uh, a trooper who attempted to stop a vehicle uh, late Friday night, this past Friday. Of course, the driver, he did not stop. There was a short pursuit that ensued. And the driver ultimately did lose control, crashing into the ditch that's kind of near, uh, near uh, Johnson Ridge mm -hmm. and Highway 20. Um, there was three adults in the vehicle that were arrested. But uh, in that vehicle that was seized, I mean, they had over 130 grams of marijuana, mm -hmm. uh, suspected oxycodone pills, uh, Adderall pills, cocaine. There was also a handgun inside that vehicle that was also uh, reported stolen that was recovered. So just as one event, I mean, you had multiple drugs that were taken off the street, a potential handgun that could have been used, if not already in the crime, that's still, you know, crime lab stuff has to analyze. It's a very fresh case. It just happened this past Friday. But I mean, our troopers are out there. They're looking for, it's not just drunk drivers and speeding tickets and no seatbelts. I mean, they're actually out there doing proactive enforcement, trying to get these uh, people off the street that have these drugs and have these guns. Seems like back in the day when we were reporting on arrest from state police, uh, these were rare. It seems y'all get a lot of these quite a bit now. Yeah, and that was just the Friday. We also had Saturday, mm -hmm. uh, we had a trooper who attempted to stop a vehicle for a uh, uh, dark window tent. Driver, he did pull over, but during the stop, driver refused to give any type of form of ID mm -hmm. like you're required to do if you get pulled over by the police. And ultimately, they found out that the guy had six warrants out for for his arrest. And ultimately, they had to go and scan fingerprints and identify him that type of way. But, I mean, that's another person that's taken off the street with all these warrants, uh, things such as that. So, again, like I said, our troopers are out there. It's, it's not just out there. You know, a lot of people think all we do is just work crashes, get drunk drivers off the street, write tickets. And that's an important part of what we do. It's the main function. But... Just like any sheriff's department or police department, it's all about public safety and the whole respect, right? The whole the whole area of it. And if it's getting drugs off the street, guns and violent criminals, that's what we're going to do also. But at the same time, uh, Trooper Brennan, it's about y'all staying safe too. And yeah. there's more and more emphasis on that because the crime has escalated quite a bit. It has, whether it's the hurricane with drugs coming in or mental health issues. Um, like I said, we're starting to see kind of an uptick in people not wanting to stop, pursuits having to ensue. Um, but yeah, I mean, whether it's our area or New Orleans or Baton Rouge or Lafayette, I mean, every place is kind of having a rise in crime. Um, so, I mean, what's the answer for that? I don't really know, but just know, I mean, like I said, our troopers are out there. They're going to enforce the law. We're going to try to get these people off the street and try to keep everybody safe. Yeah, and y'all do a great job at that. I, I know we have time to get both of them in, but this past Friday at H.L. Bourgeois, y'all had a career event. Tell me about that a little bit. So this was pretty outside the box. It's something a little different. Uh, Miss Selena Richard, who is a, uh, a guidance counselor over there, she reached out, and they have a, a group of students they call ESL, English as a Second Language. So a lot of those students there, they don't even speak English is primarily just Spanish. So we have an investigator that works uh, works for our department. We also have a trooper that works for our department that are bilingual, they're fluent in Spanish. Mm -hmm. So we were actually able to go in there and provide those students a career day all in Spanish. Then I have no idea what they said. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I don't know Spanish, but the whole thing was in Spanish. And the amazing thing about it is that their whole demeanor changed. As soon as they started speaking in Spanish, you can see those walls and that hesitation, that reserve, that shyness kind of fade away and they were able to communicate with somebody in their natural tongue, their natural language. And so they asked all types of questions about the career, proper steps, if they do want to become the police officers. The kind of the latest craze also is, you know, serial killers with that show on Netflix. So they asked about some stuff like that. We mm -hmm. actually had some uh, bones that the uh, investigator brought from the crime lab, some human bones. So they got to see some samples. But it was awesome. It was a great day. And it, maybe they don't want to be police officers in the future, but at least it showed them that not all police are bad. You know, we want to, you know, be the friend. They can come to us if they need help. We gave them some resources. Maybe if they see some uh, maybe loved ones, whether it's human trafficking mm -hmm. or other types of bad situations uh, that kind of come with immigrant people uh, coming over from mm -hmm. uh, Hispanic countries. Um, we just gave them those resources and just, if anything, just talk with them, communicate with them. And it was a really great day. It was, it was pretty cool. Yeah, another set of eyes never hurts for sure. Exactly. Let, let's talk about... You have a cadet class uh, 102 coming up. Can you tell us more about that? 
So the deadline to apply for that class will be this October 17th. All right, it's only eight days away. So time is ticking if you want to apply, but we're always looking for people who can make a difference in their community. Like I said, we have those troopers that were able to make a difference by speaking Spanish to the members of the public and that I can't reach. I'm not bilingual. I don't know Spanish. Um, whether, again, we have these troopers going out there, getting these drugs, getting these guns off the street, these wanted people. So if you feel that's calling in your life to help serve your community in a little bit of a different aspect than maybe what you're doing now, come to state police. We're definitely, it's going to be a full academy. So whether, you know, you have prior law enforcement or just college or just military, we're looking for these individuals to join. And again, deadline for that will be October 17th, so only just a few days. Um, if you are interested, you can call my cell phone number, 985-855-0241. Uh, I can get you in touch with the proper steps, the application process that you need to get through. And uh, we hope to see you there in the academy. Well, you have really opened it up. It's a great career. Uh, got great people that work at the state police. So it's an opportunity for a lot of people, isn't it? It is. Great career, great retirement too, great health. Um, that's the main thing with our retirement. You do your years that you need to work, and whenever you retire, you're getting 99% of whatever your ending salary is. So it's great long-term also. All right, Trooper Ross Brennan, thank you so much for what you do, and you're always transparent, and come visit us at HTV. Uh, thank you so much. No, thank you. I appreciate it. All right. There you have it, Trooper Ross Brennan, and we'll take a short break. We have a lot more here on Bayou Time, so we'll take a short break. We'll come back. More programming right after the break.